man with the baby face, the founder and president of the Serbian Unity Party, has been a criminal since he was 14. By age 20, he had already spent three years in a Belgrade jail. In 1992, the first United Nations group was set up to investigate atrocities in former Yugoslavia. Uh, this is a picture of one of our operations. The chairman was Professor Sherif Basuni. Arkan immediately caught his attention. Arkan is remarkable because there is a man whom we discovered has seven arrest warrant by Interpol. Uh, there is a man who used to work for the uh, Tito regime, uh, Ministry of Interior, as a killer of opponents of the regime. A Yugoslav government hitman. According to intelligence sources, he got the job at the age of 21. And along with it came phony passports and plenty of new identities. Sometimes he'd be British, then Italian, or even French. From Belgrade to Stockholm, Brussels to Milan, he built a criminal record of stick-ups, armed bank robberies, burglary, theft, breaking and entering, escape from jail, and violent assault all the while on the Yugoslav government payroll. And that was just the beginning. At the start of the 1990s, power struggles between its six member states are breaking up federal Yugoslavia, and Slobodan Milosevic, president of Serbia, has expansionist plans. It was clear that Milosevic and the people around him were determined to carve out a greater Serbia, and to expand their territory at Bosnia's expense and at Croatia's expense, and that the way they were going to do that was to purge that territory of, of non-Serbs. Milosevic chooses Arkan for the job. August 1990, Belgrade. General Marko Negovanovic of the Yugoslav National Army signs the authority allowing Arkan to form a special military force. The Croatian government here in Zagreb had known about Arkan for years. They knew that he had joined the Serbian secret police in Belgrade in 1973. They also knew that he had been assigned to carry out what they called dirty jobs throughout Europe. And then, in the dawn hours of November 29, 1990, news reached them from a border town about 100 miles from here. A hit team, calling themselves the Serbian Volunteer Guard, had been arrested. They were armed to the teeth with explosives and weapons of assassination. Their leader was Arkan. In an office after the arrest, the Croatian police taped Arkan and his men with their weapons. Submachine guns with silencers, special revolvers, 40-shot machine pistols, hand grenades, CS gas canisters, and 400 rounds of 9mm ammunition. June 1991, Zagreb. After six months in custody, Arkan and his men are convicted of planning armed insurrection in the Kraina region of Croatia, where the population is predominantly Serb. Arkan draws 20 months in jail, but for reasons still unclear, he is immediately returned to Serbia and walks into what is now an undeclared war. The Yugoslavian military is on alert at this hour to have... Croatia had just seceded from Yugoslavia, giving Milosevic the excuse he needed to invade the newly independent nation using the Yugoslav National Army. As a result, anti-war protesters had taken to the streets of Belgrade, the Serbian capital. People constantly demanded, okay, fine, if we have to go to war, please then explain us. Why are we going there? What are our uh, war uh, goals? Few wanted to fight for Milosevic's greater Serbia, and the Yugoslav army, by now purged of most non-Serbs, was plagued by deserters, poorly equipped, and demoralized. The basic question, what the hell, what the hell are, we, are, are we doing there? The Serbian forces' first target was Vukovar on Croatia's far eastern front, a hundred miles from Belgrade. The campaign was a prolonged fiasco. By the time they captured it, they had reduced the city to rubble. 
When Arkans volunteers, now calling themselves the Tigers, opened a training camp nearby, the contrast with the army was stark. They brought discipline, purpose, and privilege. Arkans sold videos of the Tigers to drive the point home. These so-called Tigers were given brand new uniforms by the army. They were given brand new military equipment by the army. They were also given the latest high-tech gear from the Serbian secret police. So all of these things together clearly indicate that they had a very special status. That special status and Arkan's apparently high-level political clout infuriated many army officers. They had to live with Arkan, but they didn't like him. Arkan was simply someone who was not part of their idea of warfare, their idea of how to solve national issues. I think that they simply hated his guts. Arkan reported only to Belgrade, and for good reason. His troops targeted civilians. The task was to murder and terrorize men, women, and children. This was ethnic cleansing. This was not war. This was not on the battlefield. This was uh, going after usually innocent civilians. It was going after people that had very little of any, if any chance of defending themselves. They were absolutely unscrupulous. They would kill um, anything in sight. The only limitation is that they would not kill other Serbs. But beyond that, they would kill anything that moved. How many died at the hands of Arkan's men? There are no precise figures. And no indictment can quantify the terror that Arkan generated as an act of policy.